I first got Mega Man 8. At the same time, I got Mega Man X4 and Final Fantasy 7 for Christmas one year when I got my first PlayStation. And while I really liked Mega Man X4 because of all the fast-paced, awesome action that it uh, provided, I wasn't really as big of a fan of Mega Man 8. So, now that we're to that point and I've reviewed 1 through 7, let's take a look at Mega Man 8. There is a bit of information I have to divulge. Um, I'm not playing the PlayStation version of Mega Man 8. I'm not playing the PlayStation Network version of Mega Man 8 that I could download for my PlayStation 3. Remember how I said don't play any Mega Man games on this anniversary collection for the GameCube? That still stands. I honestly just didn't really want to pay for another version of Mega Man 8 at this juncture. So, eventually I will, but in an effort to get my Mega Man 8 video out that I really want to do, I played it on here. There are really only two problems that I ran into during my playthrough. The first is that I know the music is messed up in some places. The other Mega Man games fare a bit worse, with music stopping and not looping correctly, but there just seems to be something off about how Grenade Man's stage starts, for example. Ready. The second issue is that the A and B buttons are flipped. I didn't do too bad with this configuration, but I definitely had issues with running, jumping, and shooting at the same time. I charged my Mega Buster a lot more often as a result. I feel like a broken record lately. Mega Man 8's story is pretty cut and dry and there's not a whole lot to it. So, I don't know, not much to see here, but we'll go over it anyway. A robot and a dark entity fall from the sky. Dr. Wily takes the dark energy and Mega Man sets out to stop him. The robot, named Duo, assists Mega Man in his journey. The dark entity never appears again. Proto Man shows up at a few points. Spoilers! Mega Man beats Dr. Wily and then is rescued by Duo. The end. Mega Man 8 is the first and only Mega Man game in the classic series to use anime cutscenes. While the animation is pretty darn good, the voice acting leaves a lot to be desired. We must recover all the energy immediately, Mega Man. But where is Dr. Wily? That's a good question. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wowie. Dr. Light's voice in particular has been made fun of countless times in the gaming community. <laughs> I got you a present, Mega Man. <laughs> Here you go. I am number two, complete. The graphics in Mega Man 8 are actually pretty damn good. Everything is incredibly animated and lively. This looks like a world Mega Man would live in. I've always been a fan of this game's visuals. It's just so pretty, even if it's a world filled with robots. The backgrounds make the world look lively and entertaining. There are huge enemies and small enemies and some in between. They're all incredibly detailed and look fantastic. The music to Mega Man 8 is another story entirely. There are a few good tunes here and there, but honestly, it's not really all that noteworthy. The music and sounds are all upgraded to take advantage of the new PlayStation hardware, and the quality is very good. The problem is that the compositions are just not as memorable or up to the earlier standards set by the series. The Sister X series was really still going pretty strong at this point in terms of music. I can think of a couple Mega Man X tunes, uh, Mega Man X4 tunes right off the top of my head. And honestly, Mega Man 8 has a couple good tracks that I like, particularly the end 
theme and um, the intro music. Mega Man 8 follows a very similar formula to its predecessors. Beat 8 Robot Masters, traverse a Skull Castle, then face Dr. Wily. On the surface, you may think the game isn't much different from earlier entries. That really isn't the case. Capcom did what they could to create a different experience for longtime fans of the series, while still retaining some familiarity. Remember the fun and precise platforming that was found in earlier Mega Man games? Well, it's not quite here. The platforming is imprecise comparatively, and it feels incredibly loose compared to the tightness of the original NES games, and to some extent the SNES entry. I missed jumps in this playthrough way more than I would have in any other Mega Man game. Capcom kind of abandoned the jump and shoot mechanic that made the original game so popular. And this time they kind of tried to take a little bit of a different approach and added some extra mechanics that we hadn't seen before. Mega Man is subjected to auto-scrolling areas such as the snowboarding and rush jet segments. The snowboarding segments tell you when to jump and slide and the rush jet segments just eliminate jumping from the equation and try to bring a few shooter levels to the game. Mega Man also now has the ability to swim, making water levels incredibly different and less fun, in my opinion. These portions show up far too often and break the action unfavorably. Rush was also changed in this entry. Gone is the Rush Coil ability, with a Mega Ball taking its place with helping Mega Man reach higher places. Mega Man also does not have access to the Rush Super Adapter from Mega Man 7, or either of the armor adapters from Mega Man 6. Rush can turn into a motorcycle, but there really isn't a great place within the game to use this. Rush has a search function again, but every time I used it, he just fell asleep. He can also be summoned into battle to drop bombs or health items. The health item drop is used instead of E-Tanks, as you'll find none here. Now this stuff is really opinion. You may really like Mega Man 8, but I always thought Mega Man was about jumping and shooting, great platforming, and awesome extra weapons. And Capcom made some changes with mechanics that I really didn't enjoy. Now, that being said, there are some really good things about Mega Man 8 that I'd like to point out. The Robot Master weapons in Mega Man 8 are a lot of fun and seem more useful in this game than in previous Mega Man games. I found myself actively using different weapons for different situations, without even really thinking about it. Capcom again decided to split the 8 Robot Masters up into two sets of four. This was done so that you can be required to use Robot Master weapons to proceed through the final four Robot Master levels. I thought this was a really cool touch. For example, in Search Man stage, you have to use the Thunderclaw obtained from Clown Man to swing across pits. In Sword Man stage, you have to use all four of the previous set of Robot Master weapons to make it through the first half of the stage. The uses are all actually pretty cool, such as having to use the Flash Bomb to light up rooms to solve a puzzle. Capcom did this with Mega Man 7, but the Robot Master weapons from the first four bosses weren't as required. You could finish the last four stages using just your Mega Buster if you wanted. Another really cool feature is the ability to shoot your regular Mega Buster while having an alternate Robot Master weapon equipped. This was useful in some situations, such as when you needed to use a Robot Master to break through a specific barrier, but needed your Mega Buster to more efficiently clear the way of enemies. I really liked this, and I find myself thinking it would have been really cool to see in previous games, even if the button layouts wouldn't have allowed for it. 
You are also given the ability to upgrade your Mega Buster in Dr. Light's lab, along with some other useful items such as a shield that protects you from knockback and extra lives when you start the game. Mega Man 8 isn't a bad game, but whenever you look at games like Mega Man 2, it just doesn't stack up. Now, I did play it on the Anniversary Collection, and, you know, that's not the way to go if you want to play any Mega Man game, but, you know, it, it's really not that much different. Um, the Anniversary Collection uses the PlayStation version. Now, there was also a Saturn version that was released. And it costs a whole lot of money now if you want to play it. So I've never actually played the game. I've never played it on Saturn. I'd love to play it on Saturn, but such is life, I guess. Uh, you can pick up the PlayStation version for about 20, 20 to 30 bucks, I think, uh, last time I checked. And the PlayStation Network Store version is even cheaper than that. So that's probably the way you want to go to play Mega Man 8, unless you're a collector. Um... And that all being said, I don't like Mega Man 8, but I had a lot of fun making this review and, and analyzing the game and trying to look at it as, look at it as objectively as possible. Um, and if you love Mega Man 8 and you have things that you want to rebut, uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe. Like my video. You know, share it. Tell your friends. Um... I appreciate it. Thank you for watching and later.